Hey, welcome back. So in this video, I thought we would create a Hello World application in ARM assembly for Apple Silicon. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I have a lot of fun creating assembly code. I think it makes me a better programmer because then I can translate high level concepts back down into low level concepts. And it always gives me that sort of grounding. Now, as I've been messing around with Apple Silicon, because obviously I have an M1 device and I want to mess around with my iPhone and iPad as well. Um, what I found is that the typical ARM assembly coding tutorials, etc., are really focused on Raspberry Pi and pure ARM assembly, and therefore they tend not to work on Apple Silicon devices. So that's why I'm doing this particular tutorial. Hopefully you'll learn some stuff, hopefully you'll have a lot of fun, and then realize that as you're coding high level languages like C, C++, or Rust, that the concepts that you are building there is ultimately gonna translate down into assembly language. So having that understanding is really gonna help you become a better programmer. So the first thing you need to do to get started is you're gonna to have to have Xcode command line tools installed on your machine. To do that, you would just type in Xcode at select at dash dash install. Now, when I run that, I'm gonna get an error because I've already got Xcode installed on my machine. And it says, if I wanna do an update, then use software update. So you can go ahead and do that. But uh, if you haven't got Xcode, already installed in your machine, then it's gonna download that, get it installed, and then you're gonna have all the tools that you need. So before we start writing some assembly code, what we're gonna do is create that exact same Hello World application in C. The reason we're gonna do it in C is it's very close to the assembly that we're writing, and therefore the concepts that we're gonna introduce as we write that code is gonna be easier to translate if we understand what's happening in C first. Now I'm picking that over languages such as JavaScript or Rust or anything like that because the C code is much, much closer than those languages. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create myself a new uh, C file. So I'll just type in uh, touch hello.c. That will create me an empty file. We will just do code dot, and then that will give me a Visual Studio code. And I will open up my hello C uh, file. And what we're gonna do is just write hello world in C. So I'll put a comment, hello world in C. So that's nice and uh, handy there. So First thing I need to do is I'm gonna create my include files because I'm gonna to want to interact with the kind of standard IO uh, functions. So things like the printf, et cetera. So the ability to uh, read and write to the standard output. So we'll just uh, include that here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a main function. You can <laughs> see GitHub Copilot is already giving me a nice suggestion. So let's uh, let's uh, just like that. So you see what's actually happened is I'm gonna have a function called main. So that's sort of standard convention for C programs is that you're gonna have a main function there. Uh, it's gonna return a value. So when it terminates, it's gonna have a, a return value. In this case, it's gonna return uh, an int. And then, of course, it accepts in uh, parameters. So in this case, it's uh, it wants a void, but I'm gonna uh, ignore that. I can leave that sort of empty. So I'm gonna have an empty parameter list because I'm not gonna pass any parameters into my command line. So it's gonna come back with hello world. Uh, I'm gonna type in printf and that's gonna semicolon terminate that. And then all I need to do is uh, return a value. So in this case, I'm gonna return zero and then I'm gonna uh, close off my braces for my block there. So it's pretty simple. All I'm doing is printing hello world uh, to the screen and I'm doing that with the printf, just passing in my string and then I'm putting in that return code, so return zero. And zero in this case is meaning success, there's no error conditions, and that is the int that it's gonna return. So if I save that, and if I come back to my terminal for a second, and if I want to compile this, I can do this in multiple ways. If you wanna use uh, GCC, you can uh, install that by doing brute install GCC. I've already got that uh, installed on my machine, so I'm not gonna do that. But if I wanna compile it with GCC, I can go GCC hello uh, .c, uh, and I wanna do a minus O, so that's it's gonna create a, an output file, and it, that output file is gonna be the name of your executable. So in this case, it's gonna be hello, so if I I just type that and you'll see it's created that and if I just call dot hello you will see it's came back with my uh, hello world nice and simple uh, technically if I wanted to let's get rid of that hello uh, technically if I wanted to I could use Clang and I think Clang comes with uh, Xcode built in you might need to install that locally I can't remember off the top of my head um, but you know, go Google how to do that but uh, you can type in uh, Clang hello dot C uh, and then I'm gonna output hello. So we'll just do that. You see it's outputted it. Uh, you can see I've got a hello file and if I type in dot hello, I've got the same hello world again. So nice and simple, that's how it works in C. 
So before we actually go and create our assembly, let's actually understand what's happening underneath the hood with uh, C for a second. So we have the C compiler, which can be Clang or GCC. And what it's gonna do is actually compile your underlying files, hello.c, and then it's gonna do that compilation and then it's gonna create what's known as an intermediate object file. Now that's happening underneath the hood. You're not seeing that at this moment, but we're gonna manually break that down so that you can kind of see those steps. The, the thing that is the problem though, is any sort of external libraries you've got or any external global variables. At this point, it doesn't know anything about that. So if we come back to our hello world C file for a second, now of course it's gonna be compiling all of this, but we've got that include file, remember, which is the, the standard io.h, which is providing us this function called printf. And that's actually the key part of this process. So when if I come back into my uh, uh, slide there for a second, I do the hello.c compilation, but as it stands, because the standard IO at uh, .h is actually the thing that's got the printf call, I need to think it's writing out to my uh, uh, standard output, then I need to be able to link those inbuilt system libraries together. And that's where a linker comes in place. So the linker is gonna sort of take any libraries that you need, link them together so that when you're referencing any sort of global or external functions, it's gonna smoosh that together and then you're gonna have that outputted executable. So if we didn't have this sort of linking step in between, we wouldn't know where those system libraries are and we wouldn't be able to use this sort of standard uh, Linux output calls or Unix output calls. And that's gonna be important when we get to Apple Silicon a little bit later. So if I come back into my terminal for a second, what we can do is we can actually do this manually. So what we will do in order to generate that object file is I can pass in my, uh, I can use Clang again, I can pass in my hello.c, that's my uh, source file. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the minus C option, which is then say, go generate me an object file. Rather than generating an executable, go generate me that object file. And now as an output, I'm gonna do the minus O, I'm gonna want you to output a hello.o. So by convention, these object files are called hello, or are called dot O files, or dot object files in that sense. So if I run that for a second and then do an LS, I can now see I've got my hello.c, which is my original source file, but I've now got that hello.o, and I can't execute that because it's not an executable at this stage. So what I now need to do is in order to get that standard IO stuff, i.e. the writing out to the output, and even doing things like termination, I need to get access to that uh, standard IO library. And to do that, I'm gonna have to do my linking set manually. So to do that, I'm use a linker, it's called LD. If you wanna understand more about the linker, you can type in man LD and read all about it. Uh, but uh, if you type in LD, and what I wanna do is pass in my hello.o file. So that is my input file in this case. So I wanna, that's what I'm gonna pass in for linking. And then I want to uh, essentially output, so I'm gonna put a minus O, and I wanna call that hello. So I want my executable to be called hello. And what I now need to do is pass in the list of libraries that I would need to um, essentially link uh, as part of the compilation process. So in this case, I wanna pass in the, uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the Mac OS SDK, which has got all the libraries I need and all the standard IO function calls. So if I, um, let me just open up another uh, tab in my terminal for a second. So I just type into that terminal, xc run minus SDK Mac OS uh, X dash dash show dash SDK dash path. What it's gonna do is come back with the location of that SDK and that's gonna have all the libraries that I need to be able to do my linking. And if I come back to my terminal, what I essentially need to do is pass, pass in that SDK path, because that's got my libraries that I need, and then it's gonna be able to link it to the standard function. So to do that, I'm just gonna type in minus L system, so it's saying go get the system calls from here, uh, minus syslib root, and then I'm just gonna put a tick in here, and then I'm gonna uh, copy in uh, that command that I typed in earlier, and then I'm just gonna uh, just add another tick here. And that's basically saying, when you do the linking, go link uh, the system files from this location here, and then it's gonna be able to find all my standard IO calls. Um, that's kind of cool. And then the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna pass in minus E, uh, and minus E is basically saying, what is my start? 
function name, right? So again, if I come back into Visual Studio Code, you can see uh, I've got a function called main. So from a linker perspective, when it's starting at executable, what is its start and function? In this case, it's main, and the convention is, so when I write something in, in C, it's gonna take that uh, main function, and then it's gonna rewrite it, and then just give it an underscore. So I'm just saying, start that file there. That's gonna be important when we get to Apple Silicon a little bit later. And then the last thing I wanna do is specify the arch. So in this case, I'm gonna type in it's uh, minus arch, arm 64. Now I could skip that and not specify the arc, uh, the arch because I'm already on uh, my M1 device, but you know, um, it's fine to kind of put that in. So once I do that and run that, you can see that's executed. And if I do an LS, you see, and now I have my uh, executable there. And if I type in uh, uh, dot forward slash hello, you can see it's come back with my hello world. So I've done that two-step process now. What I've done is, is I've done my compilation to the intermediate object file, and then I've done the linking manually uh, into my uh, final executable. So now that we understand what's happening underneath the hood, we can actually write our Apple Silicon uh, assembly. So first things first, what we're gonna do is create that hello world application. Now, what we will do is we need to create uh, a source file. So convention in this case is it for to have a .s uh, uh, extension. So we will call something hello.s. So once we've done that, we can type code dot. And there we go, we're in Visual Studio and we have our hello.s there. Now I am using an extension here, as you can probably see. So if you go to extensions, and then if you type in uh, something like uh, arm assembly, you will see there is a, an arm assembly uh, extension by Dancy Underwood. That's the one I, I'm using there. So if you want all the kind of nice uh, sort of uh, uh, syntax highlighting, etc. Then do that. Okay, so we are going to create our uh, hello world uh, application. So we'll say hello world. Now, before we do that, what I want to say here is that rather than going directly to the hello world, what we will do is just create an application and then terminate it first. Once we are able to terminate it, then we will be able to uh, <laughs> uh, it then extend that to have hello world. So what we will do here is the first thing that we need to do is specify what the starting function is gonna be or the starting label. Um, so again, remember in the linker we put minus E and then we said this is the starting function. Well, you can actually specify within assembly what your starting function is gonna be. And again, that's nice and useful for when you do the linking. So to do that, I just type in dot global and then I say the uh, starting function in this case can be made. Now convention, most people will use underscore start, um, but I actually, I'll, come, I'll change that to start later on, but I'm gonna use main for just now, just so that I'm a little bit in line with the, uh, the C code. Now the next thing that you need to do is you need to put in dot align to. Now just be aware, if you're using something like uh, Raspberry Pi, then the dot align is usually uh, set to something like four, but in order to make this work for Apple Silicon, you need to set it to two. Now the major for reason for that is the Apple Silicon has to start on a 64-bit boundary, which is why that's a two in that particular case. You don't need, we don't need to go into the technical details all around that. All you need to know is that that value is always two. So once we've done that, the next thing that we want to do is write our main function. So to do that, we will uh, we will just say we're going to have a main function again, and. Essentially, you can see my, uh, <laughs> you can see GitHub Copilot is making a bunch of suggestions. You can ignore them because it's, uh, honestly, it's all nonsense. So we will just uh, do uh, underscore main. And then what we will say is we want to do a move. And then I'm going to put in x0 and then I'm gonna put in uh, the number zero. Okay, I'm not gonna to go too much into the details for a second, but when you're dealing with assembly language, you're essentially interacting with registers already. It's basically uh, a register-based machine in this particular case. I have a whole video on that uh, uh, elsewhere, but I'm not gonna go on that into too much detail just now. So essentially, in the case of ARM assembly for Apple Silicon, the first seven registers uh, of the X variety, i.e. X0 to X7, 
are basically for parameters. So if you think of making a function call, x0 is going to be the first parameter of my function. That essentially is what's happening here. So when I'm passing in a, a zero here, what I'm essentially saying here is I'm, I'm sort of setting myself up to make a function call. I'm passing in the number zero and essentially uh, is going to go into that first register. So I, again, remember that return statement. What I was doing was returning zero. Return is essentially I'm, I'm making a termination. I'm ending. So I'm going to make a, a system call of some sort. And what I'm doing is setting up my parameters in advance. So basically, I'm doing a move. I'm moving at the value zero, the return zero into the parameter register, which is register x0. So registers x0 to 7 are used for uh, parameters for a function. That's what's going on. There is also an, an x is basically the x register. That's for 64 bit uh, integer numbers. Um, yeah, I could pass through w0 if I want to pass through a 32 bit in integer number. So I could I could do w0 there and it's not going to make any difference. But you know, we're, we're dealing with 64 bit in general. So I'm just going to default to using x0 in this case. So I'm basically setting myself up, I'm going to call a function, and I'm going to pass in the value zero uh, there. So next thing that I want to do is I want to terminate the program. And basically to do a termination, I need to call a uh, Linux service command, right? And that is essentially done by calling move x16. So again, another register. And basically, when you call x16, you are saying, um, I am getting ready to call myself a uh, a supervisor call. We'll go into this in a little bit more detail in a second. And when I make that supervisor call, uh, I wanted I want to tell you which command I'm going to call. In this case, we want to call termination. Termination is represented by uh, number one, um, and then when we make the supervisor call, it's going to say, "Okay, in x16, I can see the command you're trying to call, which is going to be number one in this case." So I'm going to use that, and I can see that in x0, the parameter is you've got uh, zero there, so you're going to do a return zero. So essentially, that's going to result in a return zero. And then all I need to do to make that supervisor call is to call svc at zero. So if I were to now run that or actually I need to compile it and run it, what it's going to do is essentially, uh, once I've compiled it, is is essentially it's going to uh, run the program and then terminate straight away. So now that I've created my assembly file, what I want to be able to do is compile that and then run the executable. Now, because all we've done there, we haven't written out hello world, all we've done is the termination. Once I do my compile and linking, yeah, we're going to be doing compiling and linking in a second. Once we've done that, I will be able to execute that and all it's going to do is start the program and then it's going to uh, terminate it. That's what's going to happen. But before I do that, I need to compile it. So what I'm going to do is remember hello.s. Well, when I installed Xcode, it also uh, uh, installs a bunch of tools, which is includes uh, my assembler, which is in this case is AS. So to essentially compile this, I'm going to do as hello dot uh, s which is my uh, my input file, and I'm going to do a minus O for my output, and I'm going to call it hello.o. And if I do an ls, you can see I've got an object file. And this works exactly in the same way as it does with C. So rather than, you know, and remember in C, I did a clang uh, hello.c minus, um, uh, minus o hello.o. Well, in this case, rather than using clang or gcc, I'm doing a hello.s, and I'm using uh, and my uh, assembler as my compiler in this case. So I'm compiling from uh, you know assembly text format uh, down into this object file. And it works in the exact same way as a C file. So I've got my hello.o, and therefore all I need to do now is I do my linking exactly as I did before. So if I just search through uh, here, you can see I've got hello.o, I want to uh, output a hello file. And remember, this is one of the reasons I set the uh, the um, the 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 name to main in this case. Remember that main. So uh, if I just run essentially the exact same command that I did for C, is linked and it and it works. And if I do an ls, you see hello. And now I can do dot hello. And what it's going to do is just run this and terminate.
which it does. Before we move on to the next part, what we're, what we're gonna do in the next part, obviously, is we need to then write out the hello world. But to do that, we need to understand a little bit more about this supervisor call that we wrote in our assembly, right? And that's one of the key things. So remember what I said before, this supervisor call allows you to call application. It basically allows the application to call the operating system, yeah? And it works by doing SVC and then essentially a number. So if you wanna understand all of the supervisor calls there, you can actually uh, go to this link here. Um, I will put it in the YouTube video uh, descriptions, but if we go to this for a second, what you're gonna see is this great big list of uh, supervisor calls. So you can see uh, uh, supervisor call one there is exit. That's essentially what we called. Uh, so it's sort of doing a, a terminate there. Um, but there's loads of other interesting calls that you can uh, you can actually do there. You can see there's there's a forking. You can do a change directory. Remember when you do a CD? That's a system call underneath the the, the hood there. Uh, we can go a, a, a little bit further. You can get your PIDs, your UIDs, etc. You can kill. You can do a kill there. Uh, that's really interesting. Uh, you can do a reboot. You can actually make the call. You can make your system reboot if you want as well. Actually, we might do that for a bit of fun in a second. Um, and then uh, I think uh, the nice one there is you see a number three, number four. You see that right? Uh, well, that's going to be writing uh, to your standard output. So when you want to do the print, which we're going to do in a second, that's actually what we're going to be calling is going to be making that supervisor call. Uh, to write there, but before we do that, let's um, let's let's uh, explore uh, a little bit more. Okay, so let's let's kind of clean this up a little bit, and then I'll kind of show you what I mean. So we now understand what that supervisor call is there. So remember, supervisor call, we're passing a zero. Uh, we pass into x16 the one. Remember that big list that we said there. That was uh, that's essentially the terminate. And then uh, x0 there is basically passing in a parameter, which is the return uh, 0. So, I mean, I could put comments on this. So, return uh, 0. And then we could uh, put something like uh, uh, terminate. And then we could say uh, call uh, syscall, there we go, that'll do. So if I wanted to, if I wanna separate this out a little bit, what I could do is I could take all of this and I could give it a label terminate, and then I could uh, take all of this here and then move it under here. So let's, let's kinda of do that for a second. And then what I could do from my main call, I wanted to be a little bit uh, more uh, structured there, what I could do is call branch and then call uh, terminate. And therefore what that's gonna do is essentially call down here and do the termination. So if I wanted to now, what I could do is I could actually make my machine reboot. So what I could do here is uh, just change, copy that, change uh, the name, the label to reboot. Uh, and in this case, <laughs> if I wanna do an instant reboot, what I would do is uh, pass in a one in here. And then to do the reboot, we would uh, pass in the number 55. And then of course, we would do our syscall as before. And then if I wanna do my reboot, then I could just uh, go to reboot. And then what that's gonna do is call that reboot label there. It's gonna make that syscall as we did before. It's gonna say use the reboot uh, command and then number one does an instant reboot. Now, the good news is, <laughs> As long as I don't pseudo this, this will uh, it, it won't actually execute execute this. So, um, so if I just do uh, as hello .o and then uh, do my linking again, you see that kind of works there. But the good news is if I do hello there, you'll see it sort of terminates out. But because I'm not uh, as a uh, administrator just now the good news is it's not gonna do that reboot. But if I do a pseudo um, dot hello and then hit uh, run on that, then it's gonna instantly reboot my machine. I'm not gonna do that because I'm recording at the moment, but you know I just want you to be aware of how that works. What we wanna do now is rather than rebooting our application, what we wanna be able to do is write out hello world to standard output. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna make another one of these syscalls or supervisor calls. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna copy this reboot and we're gonna create a new 
uh, label here, and we're gonna call this, uh, we'll call it print F for fun, right? Because it's gonna align to what we wrote in, in C. So if we come back to this, uh, you know, uh, supervisor call list for a second, remember number four was at right. Now you see there are essentially three parameters. There's this FD parameter, uh, there is this uh, CBuff parameter, which is expecting a user address, and then there's this sort of size parameter, which is expecting a byte. So this is this here is basically uh, uh, you know allows you to say, I do you want to go out to screen? Do you want to go out to disk or whatever? So put in a different value will give you a different output in that sense. This here is the address of the string that you want to write out to the screen. Uh, and this here is the number of bytes in that string. So again, if we think about what we've got, everything is parameters and registers. So this would be x0, this would be x1, and this would be x2. So if we've got that in mind, I can take my uh, print uh, f here. Uh, and number one here is gonna be, uh, in, uh, you know, it was instant reboot. Uh, but actually, number one, handily enough, also means standard out in this case. So we will just continue to pass through number one. Uh, in this case, we also need to pass through uh, an x2 parameter or an x1 parameter. And what we need to do is pass in the address of the hello world string. So how we're going to do that, so this is address of hello world string. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is rather than using at move, we're gonna use ADR, which stands for address. And then we need to pass in whatever the label is gonna be. So what I wanna do now is just store my hello world uh, string as an ASCII string in a memory location. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is just type in uh, hello world string, that's pr pretty good. I'm gonna call this hello world. Uh, and then you can kind of see there it's came back with dot ASCII, uh, hello world. That's actually pretty good. I'm gonna put, uh, uh, put an N there and then that's just gonna come back with hello world. And then I can take that hello world string here and then rather than passing in at number one, I can just pass in this as my address, yeah? And then we're sort of uh, good to go. So now I've got x0 set to go right to standard out, and then x1, my second parameter is saying, this is the address of the hello world string. And then the next thing it needs to know is uh, number of bytes that this is. So I can count this out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So all I need to do now is pass into x2 that I've got uh, a 12 byte string. So, you know, it accepts in uh, basically number 12 I'm putting in there. And then the final thing that I need to do is I obviously need to change that x16 because that's no longer going to be uh, a reboot. It's going to be four. And that's going to be uh, uh, right uh, to uh, standard out and then I'm making the Cisco. And then I've got my print F, and then finally all I need to do is change that branch to print F. So if I come back to my terminal, and now if I just do my uh, assembly again, you know, I've created a new hello.o, and then I'm gonna do my linking as I did before, that should work, and now when I type in dot hello, rather than doing a reboot, what it's gonna do is come back with hello world. And that is kind of how that works. So if we come back to our code there, it's kind of what I said there. It's very C-like, right? There's my print F. There's my terminate. This this basically relates to the return zero. This is relating to my main function that I wrote in C, and this is relating to my call to print F, right? And I'm pat. I, it's, so it's very, very kind of C-like in that sense. So now finally, if I wanted to, I could change this so that it uses start. So I could set the global to being start. Uh, and say this is gonna be start now. Let's make this start. So if I if I assemble this again, and then if I link it again, you see I'm gonna get back an error there because expecting a main there is in my minus E. If I wanted to, I can get rid of the underscore main and put underscore start and then run my hello again and then it's gonna work. So that is how assembly works in Apple Silicon. It's a little bit of a long tutorial, but I think it's given you a pretty good understanding how that works. Um, 
in the future, you can extend that out. We might do another video at some point where we go into a little bit more details. We start doing, you know, typical things like kind of if statements, which are essentially branches and do things like loops, etc., or do comparisons, etc., you know, and then sort of work out all the various commands that you need. But um, I'm hoping you get a fairly good idea now of underneath the hood and you can go and create your own sort of Apple Silicon assembly code if you want there. Um, are you ever going to write Apple Silicon assembly code yourself? No, I doubt you ever will. Um, but it is useful to know what's going on underneath the hood and being able to do that yourself because if you're able to do that yourself, it's going to give you that better understanding of what the higher level languages are doing. So again, you know, when you're starting to deal with things like Rust and when you're dealing with things like C, for example, being able to to contextualize and be able to understand what's happening in the hood with assembly is going to make you a better programmer with those languages in general. So, I mean, I already did a video on Rust where I was sort of comparing the output of uh, Rust back to the assembly code. I will continue to do that. I've got some more videos I need to do in that space as well. But having that understanding of assembly language, whether it's an Intel assembly or Apple Silicon assembly, really going to help you. And even understanding how the linking works and the system library calls and being able to go, okay, you know, this is what happens when I do a terminate or this is what happens happens when I do a, uh, a standard out. I, I, it's actually a, a Linux system call that's occurring underneath the hood. That's really useful stuff and it's going to help you be a better programmer. Anyway, I hope you found this video was useful. Hopefully you can have some fun with uh, Apple Silicon yourself and I'll catch you in the next video.